Hi, I'm Annie. Contact info in the description. Is objective personality system a spiritual path? We don't have to use the word spiritual because it means a lot of different things to different people. So my definition of spiritual is more like philosophical. The problem with the word spiritual is that it brings to mind robes and beads and candles and incense and structure and rules and beliefs. And all that stuff doesn't get you any closer to the truth. If anything, it sort of obscures the truth. It distracts us and puts us asleep to the process of investigating what is real, what is really true. So you could say spiritual or philosophical, whichever word feels more comfortable to you. I've always had this deep yearning to understand what the hell is going on here? Who am I? What's the point? How does it all work? What is the nature of reality? So thinking of spirituality in that light, is objective personality system a spiritual path? So what we learn in the system is that there's a personality code. And Dave and Shan have narrowed it down to 512 types. Could be right, could be wrong. But the point is there are a finite number of, of types of different codes that present as personalities in the world. And when you observe yourself and others and you see that it is a program that's operating, it seems really obvious and natural to ask, who am I without the program? And you could say, well, there's the personality code, but then there's also nurture, the external circumstances that we are born into, the country, the family, the situation that we're born into. Then again, it, it seems pretty obvious to ask, who am I without that? And it seems like there's something there. We're, we're not just code and circumstances. There's something underneath. We are something. So to me, spirituality isn't the robes and the beads and the candles and the incense and the beliefs and the rules. It's questioning all those rules. It's not about adding adornments or adding beliefs. It's about dismantling all those things to see what's underneath. So I've heard Shan say quite a few times, you're not real. You don't understand how real you are not. You're not conscious of how real you are not because there's this program laid over and we take it for granted and we take it as real. This is who I am. I am this code. I am this collection of tendencies and beliefs and conditioning. But those are just programs. They aren't real. So what's underneath? So the program is running automatically. It's running subconsciously. You're not always even aware of it. And just by bringing that program into the conscious light of awareness, the program starts to dissolve. When you observe it clearly, it dissipates. And I've definitely noticed that in myself through studying objective personality. Like observer freakouts is a good example. I just can't take them seriously anymore. You know, the program is still there and I can get caught off guard and, you know, I'm still more annoyed by observer things. But as I'm annoyed by them, I'm also observing and aware that it's not real. <laughs> And it starts to fall apart. It really does. And your reactions become more and more decreased over time because it isn't real. You see through it. In the observer freak out or the decider freak out or, or whatever, it's not real. It's a trap. It's trying to trick you into believing that you are this program. But I don't think you are. I think you're more than the program. And my question is, what is that? What is that thing that I am that is not the program? And it seems like as you observe yourself and bring yourself into sharper and sharper focus, then the ego ego structure just becomes looser and looser. So you know like in Photoshop or any other graphic design program, you can take an object and adjust the opacity. So you take like a square or a triangle or a star or whatever, the opacity might be like 100%. But you can like nudge it down to 80 so that it's a little bit more see-through. That's what starts to happen to your persona, your ego, who you are, as you start to observe it very closely. The opacity kind of gets turned down a little bit, so there's more translucency there. If you observe yourself intensely for a year, maybe then your opacity is only 97%. And it just keeps going, you know, the opacity just keeps getting getting nudged closer to zero. And that's a really interesting process. And the ego can kind of freak out. Like, well, I'm losing my substance. I'm losing my reality. And it feels to the ego like losing something. But really, if you pay close attention, you'll notice that life is actually easier. It's easier to be in the natural flow of life as the opacity of the self gets sort of turned down a little bit. Life is more comfortable because you're not taking the fake false self as so real. It seems like all those programs are, they're really held together by fear. You know, all of those assumptions seem to be held together by 
fear or guilt or something not very great or comfortable. And as you start to lose those things, life actually gets a lot easier. You become less and less afraid of investigating that and looking at those illusions and dispelling them because you gain all this power in doing that. You gain ease and peace as you go through that process. Once you start going down this path, it just kind of keeps going. It's like the illusions of the false self and the programming in the world that we see around us. It's like, it's like bubbles rising up from the unconscious and coming to the surface and these bubbles just pop. It's just these little bubbles of falseness popping here and there and it keeps going once it starts. And so there's this kind of disillusionment that happens. And you know, when we think of disillusionment, we say, oh, I don't want that. I don't want to be disillusioned. Well, I do. I certainly don't want to be fucking illusioned, you know? I want to know what's true. I don't want to be asleep. I don't want to be this walking tangle of illusions. I want clarity. I want to see clearly. And in order to do that, everything that's false has to fall away. So it seems like the ego is this collection of programming and illusory beliefs. You start to look at that programming of the personality and you start to ask yourself what other programs are operating here. And you peel back the layers of illusion and it's just like one program on top of another program all sort of weave together to create this reality that we have so much faith in. We think it's so real. It's really a consensus reality. We all agree so much that so many things are real that really just don't stand up to scrutiny. We all agree and we teach our children that this is reality, but all of these things just can't hold up their structure when you really bring them into the light and scrutinize them. We all agree that time is real. We agree that objects are solid. You know, we don't know this stuff for sure. We just don't. It's perception. We don't know that our perception is correct. And it isn't. Our perception is not correct. Our perception is this like narrow band of functionality we can't perceive correctly. So we're agreeing that time is real, objects are solid, all these things we take for granted. For Christ's sake, we don't even know what gravity is. <laughs> like, they, we don't know so much, but we're just operating with all this confidence and self-righteous as if we've got it all figured out. You know, all the experts like assuming and, and speaking as if consciousness is in the brain. <laughs> we don't know that. You cannot prove that consciousness is in the body. We're just operating under a lot of assumptions. But what's true? That's what I want to know. I want to know what's really true. And so if I see something that is false, like, you know, the personality code, the automatic reactions, an observer freak out or a decider freak out, I want to question that. I want to dismantle it. I want to see through it because that gets me one step closer to the essential boiled down truth. That's what I'm interested in. So is objective personality a spiritual path? I think it depends on who you are and where you're at and what you're interested in because you can study objective personality at a lot of different levels and it means a lot of different things to different people. But for someone like myself who is deeply philosophical and already on this path of discovering what is really true, what is the nature of reality, then I'm going to see everything through that filter. Everything in the world is a symbol that points towards the truth and I want to look at it and understand. So for me it seems really obvious. Like how can you study objective personality and not ask yourself these questions? How can you not ask who are we without the programming? It seems really obvious and it seems like the truth is laid out before us all around and it's probably actually really obvious but we just can't see it because it's covered over in all this bullshit. All the programs and I want to dismantle those programs one by one. That's what I'm most interested in. But not everyone is interested in that. So you can totally, you know, read objective personality, you know, at a different level and, you know, get a lot out of it. Getting good at typing people, um, understanding yourself and your own programs. But I don't see how understanding yourself and your own programs and, and other people's programs wouldn't lead to this, but I don't know. Everyone's different. Everyone's interested in different things. So when you are a person who is sort of inclined to this way, a really philosophical nature, then really anything is a spiritual path. You could sit down on a few field and gaze at a blade of grass and that's a spiritual path. The, the blade of grass has some lesson to teach you. Everything. Everything in the world is a symbol that is pointing towards the truth. And I guess some people are just, you know, inclined to be curious about that and investigate it further. So yeah, for me, objective personality is a spiritual path, but so is pretty much everything. <laughs> so I wonder if other people have
have had these, you know, similar kind of thoughts about the system. Anyway, have a good week. Um, good 4th of July if you're in America. Fun times and tasty foods to eat this weekend.